I've talked a lot about characters from video games, specifically FNAF, and the horrible things that they've done, like Afton slaughtering kids in his business building where the target audience is those kids, or how Henry Emily is just a bad person for letting us burn in pizzeria simulator. But when we play games, we aren't saints, we've all done some pretty messed up things ourselves. So in the interest of fairness, some of the most popular atrocities are what we're exploring today. Let's do it. In a 10 crime spree. I think that going on a crime spree, no matter what the game you're playing is, as long as it allows for it, is kind of inevitable when it comes to just playing games in general. I mean, at this point, it's basically a, a rite of passage. Video games serve as an outlet for all of the repressed desires and thoughts that we have that generally wouldn't be accepted in society, and yet they're accepted when we're playing video games. It's healthy, in a sense. There are even whole video games revolving around this kind of experience. Thief Simulator being the first one that comes to mind, but even games like Skyrim have whole quest lines revolving around being a criminal or doing illegal activity, whether it be for the greater good or for your own personal gain. But come on, you've done it. We all have, and that's okay. But since it's so clearly inevitable and kind of a requirement, it's definitely gonna be at the top of the list. Plus, crime spree is pretty generic, uh, but don't worry, <laughs> things are about to get darker. And at nine, no questions asked. You see, in most TV shows, movies, and even real life, typically you're supposed to get information rather than just taking out everyone that you can see. Well, at least if it's a crime show or a movie, or if it's trying to be at least somewhat realistic in its approach and not something like Rick and Morty or anime. But in video games, the whole shoot first, ask questions, never state of mind is kind of the baseline. It's basically the premise of all games, that if the person is listed as an enemy, they die. They won't have information for you, and if they do, they're going to be protected by either a special set of codes in the game itself, or by just initiating a cutscene when defeated. If I'm playing Skyrim, and I'm looking for this like bandit chief who's fled the camp, I'm not going to be interrogating the other bandits in the camp. I'm going to clear them out and then just get my answers to where he fled in the journal that he wrote his whole life in but then just conveniently left on the table when he fled. That, that's just how games work, but it's it's still a pretty terrifying thing when you when you think about it. Like yeah, you're usually the good guy, but if anyone were to do this in real life, we would be pretty appalled. That's why it's an escape, okay? It's, it's, an, it's an escape to never ask questions, like how we were taught growing up. And if you like anime, be sure you check out our new channel, Most Amazing top 10 anime. Yeah, that's right, a whole channel full of your favorite anime waifus and biggest anime melons. And by that, I actually mean the fruit. I'm not even joking. Be sure you go check that out, all right? Do it, and I'll, I'll thank you. Tell them we sent you. And it ain't going alone. If you're playing a horror game, especially the kind that starts you off in a group, at some point you're going to end up getting cut off from them. Because honestly, even if they're NPCs, video games are scarier when you're not in a group. However, most of the time you end up going off on your own willingly instead of being separated by a cave-in or whatever it is. So whether we choose to do it or the story does it for us, going off alone in any game, but especially a horror game, is pretty damn scary, not to mention incredibly stupid. Like, you'll watch horror movies and think, like, why are you doing that? Why are you going to investigate that screaming? Why aren't you running in the opposite direction? But it's also seemingly realistic, because nobody thinks that they're in a horror movie in real life, okay? I mean, like, sure, some people end up thinking every small noise coming from downstairs is someone having broke into their place. Uh, I, for instance, have a bow next to my bed in case I hear something weird, but that's more for, like, my comfort because I was raised in paranoia. But even if you don't think that you're in a horror movie, going off on your own when you think that there is any form of danger possibly is a terrible idea that I don't think anyone would really do. And it's seven horrifying experiments. Here's where we get into some pretty gruesome stuff. You see, I started this list saying that video games were an outlet to do some terrible things, and I referenced going on a crime spree and thief simulator. However, horrifying experiments are also a classic video game move that we definitely have all done. Whether it be your D&D character being the one to invent owl bears, or recreating the Stanford Prison Experiment in Prison Architect, we've all done some messed up things in the pursuit of science or even magic. Any necromancer character, whether it be in D&D, Skyrim, or any other game is constantly doing horrible experiments when they bring people back from the dead, or any assassin making poisons but then testing its effectiveness on the nearest townsfolk to see if it's perfect or even just good enough. Those horrifying experiments are 
what this number is all about, okay? Think about it. I'm sure at some point we've all had that kind of thing happen, okay? Where even unknowingly we've done something that when looking at it objectively is a terrible experiment on people, humans, or whatever it may be. So, yeah. For me, I remember testing out the Ritual Stone after a Civil War battle in Skyrim since I keep going back to that game. It's horrifying and it's terrible, but it's almost guaranteed that you've done it. And at six, human rights violations. <laughs> Speaking of horrible experiments, what about the other human rights violations that we really commit in any game with people in them, okay? Even mobile games where you're running an office. Those workers never go home. You just keep adding stacks and stacks of paper on their desk that they then turn into binders for you to make money off of and then use that money to hire more workers who also never go home or get a break. And if they take a break, you actively shove them back to their desks, okay? Even a game as seemingly or intentionally innocent like The Sims. Locking a family in a house with no doors to see what would happen, or locking them in a room and setting it on fire, these are all things that we can see happen in basically any game. Again, because it's acceptable in video games. Anywhere else, we would all be horrified with these kinds of things. And in something like The Sims, you're basically God, who's controlling everything. You're not an individual person, you are a cosmic being who can add and remove items at will anywhere in this random group of people's lives because you didn't want them marrying that specific sim. So instead of a car accident or even dying peacefully in their sleep, you make them want to go swimming uh, and then you get rid of the ladder. And then for some reason, you've also made it so that they can't actually like think to just push themselves out of the pool at the edge of the pool. But yeah, so you force them to drown, like Henry making Michael burn in FNAF 6 because he had a feeling Mike wanted to die. It's messed up, okay? Halfway through into number five, plain old murder. I mean, this one is fairly simple. Any game with fighting elements or even death elements eventually causes you to use them in this form. Whether it be a target for your latest hit or the worst man in the country country that you're taking down for the sake of the world, it's still murder. And murder is bad and terrifying. In these games as well, typically we commit a gruesome murder and then return to the town or to our loved ones like nothing has ever happened, which is a terrifying parallel to life. To use Skyrim as an example again, because I recently updated my Skyrim VR mods, plus I mean I'm literally wearing an amulet of Talos, Lord Praise Talos. I wiped out a fort of bandits and then started walking back to Whiterun only to walk past a couple on their way to a wedding in the Imperial City. Their bodyguard was with them, but I've also just killed 24 people and they have no idea. Or I do a contract for the Dark Brotherhood only to walk through that same town with nobody knowing that it was me. Okay? Even the blood on the ice mission in Windhelm, where you try and catch a serial killer has you catch the wrong man first, allowing the true killer to take another victim. That same feeling of like anyone we see, anyone we pass in the street, anyone we know having just committed one of the most atrocious acts someone can commit in our world is possible, okay? It's terrifying. Imagine how many people met or just walked past Ted Bundy. They could have been the next victim. So yeah, definitely going on this list and have fun with the nightmares and agoraphobia now. You're welcome. And it for genetic mutation. And not only are we committing crimes against our fellow man and humanity in general, we're also committing crimes against random organisms in games like Spore, where the whole point of the game is to genetically engineer a species and see how it develops while throwing problems at it that force it to either adapt evolve or die out. Sure, it's how humans came to be and we evolved from the same species that apes ended up evolving from because we had different environments and challenges, but forcing it isn't really something that's natural. There are protests against experiments like that and there's a lot of controversy around it too. But in these games, we do it like it's nothing. Even in games like Plague Inc, where the whole point is to create the most deadly disease known to man and see how quickly it can destroy a person's body. Plague Inc even describes itself as quote, a unique mix of high strategy and terrifyingly realistic simulation with over 700 million games played. That's 700 million times that one of these pathogens could have been real. Don't you see how absolutely terrifying that is? If anyone had done this for real instead of just doing it in a video game, well, uh, I'm sure that this video wouldn't even have been created and you wouldn't have known that it could have happened, so... There you go. Getting close to the end, didn't number three, torture. Maybe this is just me, okay? But has anyone else actively tortured anyone in video games? Particularly for me in Blade and Sorcery, okay? I see, like, I, I tend to, to grab enemies' mouths and then hold them down and then 
with an intentionally rusty dagger. I, I, I slice their face and then I slice their arms until I get bored and then shove it in their chest or they give out. But there's other instances in games where like you have to basically torture people, right? Like, isn't there one in Call of Duty? I think there's like a scene like that or is that you getting tortured? I don't know. I know in Skyrim though, you're also meant to be hurting or even constantly killing the priest of Boethia when doing the Molag Baldadric quest, okay? And basically everyone has played Skyrim in some form, in, in some way. So yeah, even if it's just a select few, I know that I'm not alone in my torturous mindset. When I do it personally in Blade and Sorcery though, I'm acting as if I'm Oliver Queen and I need information, but that's just me projecting my fantasies of being a dark superhero into a VR game. But at least I'm doing it in a video game and not running around actually trying to be a video Vigilante, right? Yes, the, the right answer is yes, the, the video game is better. But ultimately, in number two, Annihilation. Not only is Plague Inc. about genetically mutating a pathogen so it can absolutely eviscerate a human body, the actual goal of the game itself is to wipe out the planet. Continuing on with its own description, quote, Your pathogen has just infected patient zero. Now you must bring about the end of human history by evolving a deadly global plague whilst adapting against everything humanity can do to defend itself. It's you versus the world. Like, come on! The point of this game is to annihilate the human race, and that's something that we can do in plenty of games. Videos like I Killed Every NPC in Skyrim have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. There have been so many times where the human race has been wiped out in games, and those are only the ones that we know about because they were published on Reddit or they made a YouTube video about it. Think about all the times that people have just done it because they could and then not published it anywhere because they didn't care to. Or maybe they were even ashamed because despite killing literally every NPC in that game that they could, they still wanted more. Yeah, wiping out all of life is actually more common than you would think, and truly, that's just terrifying. And finally, in number one, Anakin. Okay, you know exactly what I mean here. Come on, let's be real. Any game where there is a situation where there are multiple children in a room is going to end up causing some reenactments, especially at the Honor Hall Orphanage after the kids watch you assassinate Grella, because I mean, come on, y you can't leave any witnesses. Sure, Bethesda and most other game companies prevent NPC kids from being harmed, but you know damn well that the first thing anyone is going to mod into the game is the ability to disable that protection. Because let's face it, the world is a cruel and harsh place, and if you think that doesn't apply to children, you are thoroughly wrong. Plus, when you add lightsabers, with mods, what else are you going to expect me to do? We've all done this at least once, and there was even a Blade and Sorcery Star Wars mod that had one of the waves just be shorter versions of the banded NPCs, because they were meant to be the orphans that Anakin was absolutely decimating in what is probably one of the single cruelest acts ever made by a movie character that I completely sympathize with. There are kids that I would absolutely sick Anakin on, if I'm being honest, okay? And that's nothing new, I've explained it multiple times, and also, I'd like to say hi to the jury. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching, I have been in Shower Me, God, Monroe, and I'll see you in court.